What's up everybody, it's FYGP and today I've got a video for you guys from the BBC about how the 15 minute cities became a lockdown conspiracy. Now they should have really titled it conspiracy theory because if you say it's a conspiracy then it's actually happening. So, but without any further ado, let them explain what exactly the 15 minute city is and how it is, you know, how it is being used by conspiracy theorists. What if it could be different? What if we could create a new normal where we reclaim our time, our health and well-being? Food, medicine, education and leisure. Okay, so there we have it. A new normal. How many times did we hear that phrase during the pandemic? Of course, it's all about creating a new normal. Now, of course, they're going to dress it up in the nice terms, health, leisure, education, everything within 15 minutes. All within a 15 minute walk or cycle. The idea of 15 minute cities has spread to Paris, Melbourne and South Korea, attracted by the promise of lower car use and a better quality of life. Lower car use, that's a big part of the agenda. The WF has stated that they want to reduce the number of cars people drive. Based on what? Based on Greta Thunberg's hysteria and, uh, you know, theatrics? That's... We, we, we have to deduce a cause. Yes, I'm Klaus, I'm Klaus Schwab. We have to deduce a cause for the peasants. And uh, there's Greta Thunberg. She will tell you about how terrible her childhood was robbed. She didn't have a childhood because of the climate change. So, let's continue. But it's also become the focus of conspiracies that travel outside these neighborhoods would be restricted, a sort of climate lockdown. But thanks to COVID and COVID lockdowns, the truth was revealed that we're all apparently clamoring for these 15 minute cities. Creepy local authority bureaucrats would like to see your entire existence boiled down to the duration of a quarter of an hour. You in your area will only be allowed within that 15 minute zone that you've been allocated. Echoes of that language have recently been heard in the House of Commons. Will the leader please set aside some time in this house for a debate on the international socialist concept of so-called 15 minute cities and 20 minute neighborhoods? Disinformation researchers say this all started with the pandemic. So the idea of climate lockdown first appeared in March 2020, when news of the lockdowns in Wuhan as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic first broke into international news. And the terminology came from a set of accounts in the US who were linked to a fossil fuel think tank called the Heartland Institute. <laughs> That's complete lies. That's complete lies right there. Actually, it was Oxford University who said, wow, look at how wonderful it is that we don't have all of those cars right now with the lockdown. Look how good the lockdown is for the environment. That is what they were saying in March 2020. That is what the mainstream media was saying. So it wasn't some astroturfed campaign by, by some think tank called the Heartland Institute, never heard of it, um, to like engineer a, a bot army to... <laughs> That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, the fossil, the big fossil fuel, right? Really, it was a reframing of very old vocabulary that imagines this future of so-called climate tyranny or green tyranny, where individual civil liberties are stripped away under the pretext of solving climate change. That is exactly what is happening. That is exactly what is going to happen. <clears throat> At the time, it gained almost no traction. But months later, a number of mainstream institutions used the efforts to tackle the pandemic. Global lockdown. Every t um, two years needed to meet Paris climate change goals. Says who? It isn't some crazy Alex Jones type conspiracy theorist who says that. It is The Guardian. So they just disproved their own point. The theory did not come from some think tank that was linked to the fossil fuel lobby. To the carbon lobby whatever you want to call it no it came from their own mainstream media outlets this one being the guardian as an example of the scale of what would be needed to fight climate change 
soon yeah. as that happened, it really turbocharged this very divisive and polarizing rhetoric that pitted average people against these perceived elites. It is about control. Oh my God, you cannot have people against the elites. No, we cannot have people against the elites. Yeah, it became part of a grand narrative where the people were, you know, trying to wake up and trying to see who are those elites, right? You cannot, you cannot have that. You cannot have that, says the BBC. It is about surveillance. 15-minute cities have been drawn exactly. into this narrative of insidious control. In the UK, one particular... Of course it is about surveillance. Of course it's about limiting consumption. Of, co of course it is. And look at this ridiculous guy right here. He's wearing a Ukraine flag pin. Target has been Oxford, where misinformation has recently led to councillors receiving death threats. Death threats, really? Yeah, death threats. Let's hear those death threats, please. We've been receiving many calls and emails from worried residents in genuine fear that they might be locked in their own homes. The reality How is that a death threat? Like, that's a letter of concern. That's like a... Uh, just doesn't make sense. It just wants to paint everybody who is against their agenda as some crazy lunatic who is going to send death threats to people. The reality here in Oxford is distinctly different. The conspiracy has conflated two plans. One long-term intention to spread facilities among neighborhoods and one traffic restriction trial due to be brought in next year. Oh, it has just conflated two things. One being... One conspiracy thing. has conflated two yeah. plans. One long-term intention to spread facilities among neighborhoods and one... Uh, the long-term intention to spread facilities amongst neighborhoods and two climate change lockdowns essentially that's what he's saying a drill about a traffic restriction trial due to a traffic re restriction trial so a drill for traffic restrictions for reducing carbon emissions which amounts to climate lockdowns climate lockdowns would be the extreme sort of the extreme way you could go you could push it first but no it's just a traffic drill we're just gonna like, oh, we're just going to see how it goes without that many cars, you know. It's just a drill. We brought in next year, which we use cameras and a permit system to track car journeys among certain roads across... Oh, cameras! Yay! Cameras! Yay! Yeah! As if we don't have already enough cameras on our streets. I don't think... I think the UK has, like, pretty much cameras on every street corner in London. I'm, I'm quite sure about that. So they want to bring even more cameras in to track cars across. So once, uh, you know, 2040 rolls around, there will be a, you know, you will be fined for going outside of your. So there you have it, guys. <laughs> They're just completely full of nonsense the city and potentially find people if they use them too often oh yeah there we go there we go that's the second thing i was gonna say yeah they're gonna find people if they use their cars too often that is what they're saying but no climate lockdowns it's all just a conspiracy theory Year, which we use cameras and a permit system to track car journeys among certain roads across the city and potentially find people if they use them too often there we go. That's the first step towards a climate lockdown. But no, it's just a huge conspiracy theory. Ah, you know, it would be like saying, um, no, I didn't, I didn't like uh, plan to kill that guy. But, uh, you know, uh, I mean, we did essentially set a trap for him and uh, put that trap uh, exactly where he walks around every day. So, but no, you can't accuse me of trying to kill that guy because we didn't do anything. We didn't kill that guy. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh man, it's like... <laughs> oh man. So they're going to find people for using their car too often. 
There are, of course, legitimate questions as to how these schemes are implemented. Schemes. This is a traffic filter, and there will be six more of these rolled out around the city. Yeah, there will, there will be six more of these. There will be six more of these around the city. Businesses, for example, reliant on drive-through trade. It's very much a message to visitors uh, and shoppers, um, you know, people visiting our hotels and restaurants, um, you know, that Oxford is not accessible and you, you have to stay out of Oxford. Oxford. Yes, if you're with a car, then uh, yeah, Oxford is not accessible. You will have those shitty scooters, yes? Those fucking scooters. That is what the New World Order wants to do to you. They want everybody on one of those shitty fucking scooters, if you're lucky has included multiple exemptions from the scheme, including for businesses, carers and blue badge holders. Visitors will, of course, be able to travel by other means, including public transport, or drive around the ring road to avoid the filters. But criticism has also been levelled at the way the proposals have been communicated. There were no great efforts for everybody in the city to be made aware of what's happening, and some people still don't actually know what's happening. You can see why Certain people turn to conspiracy theories. Yeah, it's just conspiracy theories. No, we are just telling you right here in this video that we are going to limit the amount of, you know, of, of time you can drive, for example. We're going to put cameras to track you everywhere you go and see and find you if they see you driving around too much. But no, it's just a conspiracy theory. It's just a conspiracy theory that we want to institute climate lockdowns. The council say they've been consulting on the idea since 2019. There is a wider point in all this, though. Behavioural change is seen by many experts as a crucial part of achieving the UK's legally binding climate targets. Behavioural change is seen as a crucial element to the UK meeting its legally binding climate targets. Now, nowhere are those climate targets legally binding. It's no, it's not. It's simply not. That's just a simple lie right there by the BBC. And of course, it's all about changing the behavior of people. They just admit that their agenda is what is what they say. The conspiracy theorists are like crazy nut jobs for thinking. They're just confirming by this video. The UK's Climate Change Committee has, for example, urged the government to create plans to reduce demand for air travel and help change people's diets. This reduce demand for air travel and help people and change people's diets. So no more meat. Just bugs. That's that's what you're going to get. It's, but no, of course, that's just a conspiracy theory. No. They, they're, they're confirming the theory with their own video. Yeah, we well, have done that and that to implement this and that. This recent concern and conspiracy shows how these kinds of policies are communicated may be central to their success. How these kinds of policies are communicated are maybe sent. So yeah, instead of <clears throat> saying like, oh, we are gonna do a climate lockdown, we should say, oh, we're just gonna do a climate, uh, I don't know, like, what would be a nice way, a nice term for lockdown? Like, a, I don't know, a quarantine or something like that. Like a, a climate vacation, so, something like that. Like, yeah, the, the, it's important how you communicate it. If not, then there's going to be a bunch of conspiracy theorists out there <laughs> who are going to think that, you know, turning everybody into their 15-minute smart cities, which will be tightly surveilled, you know, those crazy conspiracy theorists think that putting people in those smart cities is a bad thing. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I just want to highlight this video by the BBC where they basically admit what is happening. What we find in... Okay, the there's more, there's more. Search is actually, if you're completely transparent about nudges, so if you, about the idea that some policy proposals are designed to change people's behavior and what the government thinks are positive ways, if you actually state what the goals are of the nudge, be transparent and honest about it, yeah. um, it doesn't reduce the, the efficacy of those types of initiatives at all. So they're admitting right here that they're trying to change the behavior of people. When it comes to the future of travel, though, disinformation has already taken root. Yeah, of course, and the biggest purveyors of disinformation are, one, the government, two, the mainstream media. And, of course, all of the bots on, on Twitter being number three. So, yeah, 
the BBC, lying, lying, lying media, lying sacks of shit right here. They want to cover up their agenda because too many people are waking up to it. So yeah, that's it for me. See you guys another time. This is FYGP tuning out.